What is going on, Headliner Nation? Welcome back. Next episode of Fantasy Headliners. Jake and Kyle coming at you today, talking about the AFC Championship coming up here this weekend between the Titans and Chiefs. Kyle, it's time for some more football. It's time for some more, but there's not nearly enough left. Only three games left before the season's over with. And we have to turn our attention to the XFL, and hopefully that will be enough to hold us over for a while because it's been an exciting playoffs. Yeah, all that really has to do is just get us to the next you know, stepping stone in the NFL. Get us to the combine, get us to the draft, and then after that, we really mm-hmm. don't care about you. Anyway, unless it turns out to be a good product. You never know. Uh, but we'll watch that. But let's, let's talk about this game coming up here between the Titans and the Chiefs being played on Sunday, January 19th, 3.05 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, Vegas opening up. They have an over-under set at 52 points, and they have the Chiefs as 7.5-point favorites at home against those Tennessee Titans there at Arrowhead Stadium. But let's start off on the Titans side of things. And right here, they've really been playing great defense lately. And, and overall, the whole team's been playing great. I mean, mostly Derrick Henry and the defensive side of the football. But that's what wins championships here in the NFL. And, and as of late, their last two games only allowed 25 total combined points to the Ravens and the Patriots. They're playing great right now. They're playing very great. And I saw this I, I saw this debate back and forth on Twitter. And it was very interesting to read through some of the comics. But it was basically x players against analytics guys and the analytics guys were saying there's no such thing as momentum if we can't measure something it doesn't exist and the x players were like no momentum exists and honestly if you don't think momentum exists then you probably have never been in a sport to that capacity or been in a locker room and i'm not taking a shot at analytics guys there's a lot of really smart ones out there but you can see it with teams sometimes, and you can see it right now with Tennessee with how well they have been playing. It's not just momentum, though. This is a really good football team. Jake, you and I at the beginning of the season talked about this defense, that it would be very underrated. And the key to their success this season would be Derrick Henry in the defense. And that's what they've been doing to win football games. But the key to all of this The key to unlocking the potential of this team has been Ryan Tannehill. He has been so good since he took over about midway through the season. He has been one of the best quarterbacks in all of the NFL, and that is really what has helped open up this offense, keeping teams away from the run, respecting uh, respecting the pass more with Tannehill to A.J. Brown. Janu Smith has really taken over since Delaney Walker got hurt. He had a really nice catch this past weekend. This team's playing really well. But on the flip side, you have to go to Kansas City and try and win a football game. And as you saw with Houston last week, that's not very easy to do. No, I mean, last week, there's a lot of people going, oh, crap, on social media there for a little bit. I mean, they got up to a huge 24-0 lead, and everybody's like, what has happened to the Kansas City Chiefs? What did they do? Uh, They managed to score 51 out of the next 58 total points in the game. They ran out of fireworks. I mean, this this is this offense, right? But don't overlook their defense. Their secondary, at least, it's a very solid, you know, pass defense there for the Kansas City Chiefs. It's a lot easier to run on Kansas City than it is to throw on them, which kind of, you know, plays into the hands of Tennessee a little bit. I mean, obviously, Derrick Henry is on a historic pace, and he's going to touch the ball a lot. If they can keep this game close, I really like the chances of the Tennessee Titans. The problem is keeping it close when you're playing against the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah, absolutely. And for Tennessee to win this weekend, they're probably going to have to run the ball upwards of 35 times, 30 to 35 times with Derrick Henry. He's going to have to run for 150 yards because he's going to have to be effective and efficient. He's not going to be able to just go out there and get a few yards here and there. He's going to have to have some big plays because they're going to have to move the football. But if they can do that, and they can get maybe a couple of turnovers, maybe a fumble, maybe they can get an interception for Patrick Mahomes. If they can do that, then this game is going to end up ultimately being a lot closer than what a lot of people probably think it's going to be. Now, I'm still I'm still weary of Tennessee being able to go in and hold up their end of the bargain while doing all of this. They're going to have to stick to the game plan. And the one thing they can't do is they can't get away from it. If Kansas City goes out and they put up 14 points, Tennessee can't all of a sudden bail on the run and just start throwing, throwing, throwing. They have to commit to their style of football and hopefully their defense can step up. So that's the big key for them. Can they commit to running the football, commit to playing good defense? And even if they get behind a little bit early, still do that throughout the game without panicking. Yeah. Cause we mentioned their confidence that they have right now. And, I mean, these two teams played, what, back in week 10, I believe it was. Tennessee won that game, 35-32 to off of a blocked field goal. Now, 
it's really, really hard to beat the same team in the NFL two times in one season. You hear that all the time. There's so much going against Tennessee. It's really hard to side with them and say, yeah, they got a, they're got they going to win this game. Can they? Yeah, they've kind of proven people wrong here for weeks on weeks. So we know they can do it, but a lot of things need to go right in this game. The offense of the Kansas City Chiefs with, with Travis Kelsey, who is not 100% right now, but he still managed to go out last week and put up huge numbers. Damian Williams kind of looks like what a lot of people expected to start this season. Tyreek Hill, he took a big hit. Uh, this past week I mean they have options all over the field and they can put up points very very quickly like you said though if Kansas City comes out hot or they go on a hot stretch Tennessee needs to stick to their game plan this could be uh, a very a very tight game but this game could have a lot of points scored also don't overlook the offense the passing offense with Ryan Tannehill in Tennessee we know they can put up some points they did the whole the entire second half of the season A.J. Brown can make one defender miss and take it to the house in, in just a heartbeat. Yeah, and the one thing I'm keeping an eye on too, special teams. Special teams can play a vital role. And you don't really think about it in a matchup like this where you're like, man, there could be a lot of points scored, the over-under sitting at around that 50-51, 52 mark, depending on if it fluctuates any throughout the week. But special teams in a game like this is, is still pivotal because if you get a stop on defense, you've got to pin, you've got to pin somebody. You've got to get them pinned back. You have to have your punter really help you out there. If you get stopped short, you have to be able to, you have to hit those field goals if you can't get in the end zone. So, I mean, last week we saw the Mikkel Hardman return. That was a, that was a huge momentum shift for Kansas city and really got them amped up and going again. Can they win that battle as well, the return battle, and give themselves a shorter field? So, again, you don't think about it a whole lot when you're looking at a game that has a huge over-under because, you know, you're expecting a lot of points, a lot of offense. But you get that one mistake. You get that one opportunity to switch the field, and you have to take advantage of it. Yep, absolutely. Now, speaking of Ds, you think Mike Vrabel's getting worried? (laughs) <laughs> he might be and if you don't know what we're talking about just go out and like google mike variable d and you're gonna get it pretty quick yeah i mean the dude went on uh, i don't remember whose show it was it was a very big show and he said that he would sacrifice his man junk for a super bowl title and that was a few weeks ago and now that it's getting eerily close you can even see in the the post game uh, of last week's game uh, as they're going through the tunnel i believe it was taylor lewan offensive lineman came up to him and says get ready to chop that thing off <laughs> I mean, this is crazy, but it, it adds something to the game. It makes it more fun. Like you said, we've been you know, so on the edge of our seats this entire NFL playoff season. When it comes to an end, we're going to be wanting some more. Uh, but, hey, that's a good thing to have. I mean, at least it's not going through the playoffs like, ah, this stuff is just horrible to watch. It's been pretty exciting. We're looking forward to it. And like you said, only three games left because the Pro Bowl doesn't count. Nobody cares about the Pro Bowl. That's not a, no. that's not a real game. That's more of a let's go out here and say hi to each other. At, at best it, it, it's pointless do you ever do you even watch the pro bowl kyle i'm not gonna watch the pro bowl i i feel like someone said last year they had pro bowl dfs i i don't know if i'm gonna be doing that but if you are playing some dfs this weekend this is gonna be the game in which you're gonna have a lot of ownership or players ryan Tannehill, one of my best values this weekend on the slate uh, he's under uh, $5,500. I think he's about fifty four right now. So that's going to be a really good value for you. Derrick Henry is going to be a must play in cash games. Damien Williams is probably going to be a running back I'm going to go with. Tyreek Hill. I mean, when you're looking at tight ends, honestly, this week for tight ends, I'm probably going to play Janu Smith and Travis Kelsey. Don't put a whole lot of lineups out there with two tight ends, but this is a really good matchup for both of those guys. So this is where a majority of your stacks are going to come from this week. All right, so now you can see a couple different ways this game could go. But Kyle, as far as your prediction for this game, who you got? I I do think it's going to be much closer than what we saw last week with Houston and Kansas City. However, on the road, at home, going to go with the home team this time. Patrick Mahomes, after that performance last week, they didn't doubt themselves. They played from behind and were able to come all the way back. I mean, Kansas City is way too good of a team, both on both sides of the football, that no lead is absolutely safe. And if no lead is safe, then you really have to worry about how that team is going to play in Kansas City. They've just been playing far too well. Look for Andy Reid to get himself back to another Super Bowl. We'll see what happens in that matchup. We'll talk about that one again when it becomes time. But I think Kansas City is going to get it done and get there this weekend. Yeah, I agree. I'm going to take Kansas City also. However, 
I don't know if they cover all seven and a half points. Like we said, it would not surprise me whatsoever to have this be a pretty close game, especially if the, if Tennessee can control a lot of the game clock on the ground. I mean, if their you know ground and pound is is successful early in the game, it's going to keep those scores a little bit tighter, a little bit lower. But yeah, being at home in Harrowhead, it's just too much, I think, maybe for Kansas City. They've been riding that high. They've been doing great for a couple weeks, but. I think it comes to an end this week also, and I got the Chiefs going on to the Super Bowl, but this is one of the most interactive channels on YouTube. This is just our opinion. This is just our take on this game. Maybe you see something differently. Maybe you see something that we don't see. That's the beauty of this channel. Put it down below in the comment section. Let us know what your th thoughts are going in here to the weekend, to the AFC Championship game. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I can't wait to watch some more football. Uh, and like Kyle said, three games left in the year, and I'm going to start crying because I'm not going to know what to do with all this time that we're going to have on the weekends. I guess we're going to, have to start making more fantasy football videos, Kyle, which is not entirely a bad thing. We start talking 2020 because you can never get enough NFL football, but we greatly appreciate the support out there. Hit that like button for us. If this is the type of you know content you're looking for, consider subscribing to the channel. We greatly appreciate you guys out there. Enjoy the NFL playoffs here this weekend, and we'll talk to you later.